This episode of The Horror Basement is brought to you by the Horror Amino app. Come join us in a large community dedicated to horror fans across the world. Available in iTunes and Google Play. Hi, I'm Bill Mosley, and you're in the Horror Basement with Jim Jam and Johnny Leroy. <laughs> Lick my plate, you dog dick. <laughs> Tennessee Horror News Podcast. I am one of your hosts, Johnny Leroy. And as always, we got Jim Jam here with us. Jim Jam here, guys. Hi, right, guys. So, uh, just as always, you know, we're on uh, all kinds of social media stuff. Facebook, Twitter, Twitter. Instagram, Instagram, Horamino. And you can find the podcast on iTunes, Google Play, SoundCloud, SoundCloud. Stitcher Radio. Yeah. Oh, I see that. We've been forgetting about Stitcher. That's what I popped up in my head just now. Stitcher Radio. And blueberry. Look at that blueberry, guys. Your favorite. Your favorite blueberries. So, you know, hit us up. Follow us. Do all that good stuff. Yep. And we got some merch. Yeah, we do. We got some merch for sale. Shirts. Help fund our cause. Yeah, we'll, uh, and Patreon. Help us on that Patreon. But we'll put all those links in the description below. Below. So, on today's episode, is that what we do? Yeah. We got Michael J. Kehoe. From the short film, The Hush. I don't know if y'all remember us talking about that last year. It's been over a year now. Yeah. But he did the short film. Don't confuse it with the Netflix film. <clears throat> Won, gosh damn, over 40 awards at these film festivals for that movie. Yeah. But... The feature film is called The Hatred, coming out September. We're going to hear about that, guys. Yep. So, so away we go. go. All right, guys. So, in today's podcast, we have writer-director Michael Kehoe. Michael, uh, we appreciate you coming on with us today. How are you, sir? Yeah. I'm very well, thank you. And I'm very happy to uh, to do this. I, you know, you guys have been uh, a great support of mine since the short film, so... This is uh, this is one of my favorites. Yeah, and uh, just so everybody knows, uh, he's talking about the short film Hush from, uh, I guess it was early 2016, wasn't it? Or uh, it was actually 2015. 15, yeah. Oh, and, wow. Yeah, it was. And I, I'm pretty sure the majority of people, if you if you watch short films at all, you've probably seen it. You, they, I'm, I imagine they've seen it because it's won so many awards that... Yeah, of course, uh, it got made into the feature film. I mean, that just shows you how good of a short film that well, was. Well, it, it, it was a long, a long road. And, um, you know, I never expected the film to win 34 awards. And uh, one of the awards that I was extremely proud of was an award uh, that was the Wes Craven Award. And before Wes died, he actually uh, picked this short film, Hush, as one of his favorites. And that, to me, was like, uh, you know, winning the, the golden egg. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's amazing. I mean, because you got straight-up props from him, so. Yeah. That's yeah. awesome. So, <coughs> tell us about the process. Like, you changed the name to The Hatred. And the feature film's going to be called The Hatred, correct? Correct. Well, what happened was, you know, I wrote, what I did was I wrote the, the feature screenplay first uh, many years ago. And, uh, you know, the scene that I did Hush from was inspired because I have twin boys. And when they were like four or five years old, they would always say, Daddy, check the closet. Daddy, look, you know, look over here. Daddy, look under the bed. Daddy, look out the window. And, you know, yeah. it was this ritual every night. So it stuck with me. And I decided to write, you know, one of the, that scene in there when I was writing the, uh, the feature. And then when I finished the feature, I was trying to find, I talked to my DP, who's a good friend of mine, uh, John Connor. He's the director of photography. And he had said, uh, um, let's do a short film. And, uh, and I said, well, I just finished this, this screenplay. It doesn't have a title yet. I said, but there's a great scene in there that's a standalone scene. So we took it 
and um, we could because the, the the babysitter at that time says hush so many times, we decided to call it hush. And then after it went out and it won all the awards, um, we found out that Blumhouse just released a film on Netflix called Hush. So <laughs> we couldn't use that title. And the next thing, when you know, one of the characters' names is kind of like the uh, the, the the character that uh, is our uh, antagonist in this movie um, is Alice. And so we decided we were going to call you know call the, the the character Alice, and um, and then we've got in touch with you know different studios, and they didn't want that, so we came upon the title uh, The Hatred, which is actually it's in the script. But the way it came about, going from short film to feature, was um, I had worked in production on Halloween, the Rob Zombie uh, uh, version, and I had met Ma- Malik Akkad. And uh, Malik has, you know, owns the franchise for Halloween. And so an old friend of mine um, had co- put us in contact together and we started talking. I sent him the short film and he loved the short. And then we decided to have a meeting about the script after he read that. And Malik is uh, um, really hands on. You know, he, he loved the idea of this. And he alone, you know, at that time believed that this could be you know, a feature, we could really put this up. So um, he and I would sit together, work on the script, went page by page, scene by scene, character by character. And once we felt that it was ready, we went out and and ended up raising the money. And mind you, you know, if you, just because you own a big franchise doesn't mean you, you know, you're going to go out and and raise, you know, 10 or 15 or 25 million for another movie, depending on who you're working with. And no one really knew me. I had directed a couple of features before and some short films, but no one really knew me. So they felt maybe they were taking a risk. But uh, Malik believed in it. And um, we went off, and every day before we started shooting, Malik and I met at a Starbucks, and we worked on the script for about two and a half to three hours right before we started shooting. And then we went and shot. We worked maybe 14, 15 hours, and we met afterwards for an hour. And then we'd start our day again after that. So um, I didn't get any sleep and neither did he. Don't sound like it. During the course of shooting. <laughs> yeah. And, um, and once, once, you know, once we finished and, and uh, got everything together, I, I, you know, I was extremely proud of the cast as well as the crew. I mean, we really pulled off this little movie and made it look like a, a, it was much bigger than what it is. And um, one of the things you know, that we kept in, in line with this is the performance of the actors and the actresses. Uh, the film is like 95% female. And, it you know, you would think when you first heard that the story that, you know, it's the story itself, which I'll, I'll give you a little bit into it, is uh, there is a uh, something happened has had happened in the house years prior. And there was this uh, this man who escaped Nazi Germany and went up to, uh, you know, got through through South America and up into uh, the U.S. And what ends up happening is he settles in and has this house, and he's sent something because uh, he was part of an elite team with the Nazis uh, taking um, relics, you know, that had yeah. had different occult, occult powers. Yeah. So we cut to years later, and uh, this professor had who's an archaeologist, purchases this house, which was in foreclosure many times. And um, one of his students that he hires to work for him decides she's going to come up that weekend, you know, to settle in to get to work. And she brings three of her friends. And the professor's leaving on a seminar and says, you know, would you watch my daughter, who you knew when she was a baby? And they decide, yeah, we'll have a great weekend. And um, when they get there, the proverbial shit hits the fan. So, um can I say shit? Yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. So, so the shit, the shit hits the fan. And, um, you know, it, uh, I, I didn't, the women, you know, in it are extremely great actresses. And I have four sisters. And my sister said to me, if you make a movie with stupid women, blood and guts <laughs> and sex, don't come back to New York. And, uh, I tried, to, you know, Malik and I worked on the script to make it so it was like, you know, more of a Hitchcock. 
you know, yeah. with the thrill uh, of it. And, uh, and because of these great performances, we really, we pulled it off. And, um, we had a, we had one screening for an industry screening and the response, I was so nervous. I didn't want to sit in the theater. I was going oh, back yeah, and man. forth. And, uh, yeah. And, uh, but the response was great. And, uh, and, you know, I'm still hard on myself because I look back and there's certain things that I, I wish we had more time on. You know, we didn't have that much time to shoot the movie. And, and I wish we had, uh, uh, you know, obviously a bigger budget. But uh, oh, of course, but yeah. I'm very, very proud of what we have. How many days did, you, did it take to, uh, to, to film the? Did y'all take film? Um, we shot, I think we shot about uh, 15 days, a little Ooh. less than 15 days. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, y'all were definitely rushed for time then, weren't you? Yeah, that's... Yeah. So, I mean... But we, you know, but my, my DP, uh, John Connor and I, we prepped everything. We knew, you know, what we wanted. Yeah. And we raced through. We shot everything that was in the script, you know. Um, sometimes you have a scene that you want to extend, and we couldn't, you know, couldn't do it time-wise, or you want to cover it in a different way. But um, overall, you know, we, we, we got what we wanted. And then my editor, Michael Trent, who was... Um, who was, who was the original editor on the short, he just took it and made magic, you know, happen with, with all of that. And we, uh, you know, it, it's, I, I, it's, it's such, it was such a fast moving train that I, I, I can't even, even remember some of the things that had happened on it because, you know, our mind was just moving. Yeah, imagine it. Plus the days that you spent, I mean, if you're spending 15 to 20 hours a day working, yeah, you're gonna forget a lot of stuff that happened. You you might watch, watch back through and be like, "Oh, what the, what?" what you... Oh yeah, yeah. But you know, yeah, I mean, my, you know, my head was so into the into the movie with the actors and the DP and setting up shots and trying to figure out, you know, how one scene would flow into the next scene, making sure that those those things would happen. That you know, time. You, you get there in the morning and you start and you you're trying to figure out one shot and you go you know you go through a few and all of a sudden you look and it's four o'clock. Yeah, and you know, I I mean, I don't even sit down for lunch, so yeah, it was uh, it was a great journey. And I know how you say you said you know you wish you had time, more time, more money, but sometimes it actually hurts films with all the time that they have and all the extra money, you know, that yes. they throw at it. Yeah, it's just like it's not a. I mean, you, well, I I I truly believe that uh, poverty breeds creativity. Yes. Mm-hmm. So, um, you know, we 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 did the best that we could. We shot in one location. Uh, we ended up going union, which was really, you know, it really hit our budget, but you know, we had, I had so many talented people on both sides of the camera that I wasn't complaining about anything. And, uh, sure. you know, it was, uh, it was a really, it was a great experience for, for everyone. <clears throat> Michael, how, um, how big or huge was it for you to, for Lionsgate to pick up, pick the film up? Well, in the beginning, you know, uh, Anchor Bay was uh, um, had financed it, and okay. uh, then Lionsgate, Lionsgate uh, um, had purchased. Uh, uh, they owned uh, Anchor Bay, and um, you know, I didn't know all these particulars early on of what was going on, and I, all I knew is that we had a certain amount of time, a certain amount of money, and I wasn't, you know, going to be you know, walking around saying, Hey, I got a movie that's got distribution. I, I needed to think about making a movie. Yeah. And, uh, that was the most important thing. And when it, you know, when it happened afterwards and people started talking, um, I don't know if you know it or not, but, um, there was a trailer that was made that Lionsgate made. And, um, I got a notice that, um, we were nominated, uh, for the golden trailer, uh, golden trailer park award. Uh, wow. uh, Golden Trailers Award, and I, I didn't know what that was. You know, I, I guess I, I did hear about it a while back, but I didn't know for sure. And it's kind of like the Academy Awards for movie trailers. Huh. So, um, so everybody, you know, I wasn't available to go to the uh, to the the event, which is in um, in Beverly Hills. But our little actress uh, Shay Smolik, <laughs> she was able to attend. And what ended up happening was. They show like you know, Guardians of the Galaxy and all the big uh, yeah. sci-fi movies. They show them, and then they show these five uh, horror trailers, and 
what blew me away, which made me really proud, was the first thing that, that I found out was we were nominated with The Conjuring 2, Annabelle 2, Get Out, and Stephen King's It. Just Damn. that alone made me feel like we were, you know, we did the right thing, and, and uh, I was just extremely proud. But also, th- there's a gentleman by the name of Garo who cut the trailer. And um, he is the one that was like the magician behind that to put it out. And I've got to give him uh, uh, credit because uh, he really elevated everything, those moments in the movie, and didn't give too much away. Yeah. And so w- Wayne Brady, I don't know if you know Wayne Brady, yeah. he was hosting yeah. the show. And uh, I get word that, you know, when they showed it, Wayne Brady talked about our film saying, oh, my God, I'll never look under the bed ever again. Which, you know, once again, it, it just gave us this great uh, encouragement that we had this uh, great little film. So uh, is The Hatred going to be theatrical release worldwide? or uh, No, you know, it's, it's set to be released uh, on, on DVD and uh, Blu-ray on September 12th. And then I believe after that, it'll be going to Netflix. Now, if, if Lionsgate decides to give it some sort of theatrical release, you know, then that, that would be up to them. But, um, you know, I, I think it, it'll have a better life going, uh, um, like, on iTunes and, and, uh, and Netflix as well because it'll, it'll reach everyone. Yeah. And if it goes yeah. into a limited release, you know, then there's only selected theaters and people won't get to see it. So I think this is probably a, a good move that uh, Lionsgate made for that. Yeah. I mean, yeah. well, with the independent horror films, though, it's not a bad a bad thing because, like you said, it could get lost with this the short or the small release and theatrical release in these movie theaters where they put them in markets that may not pertain yeah. to horror communities and and people that enjoy that kind of right. stuff. And then it gives it bad right. it gives it a bad light. Like, well, it didn't do that well, so you know, blah blah. You know how people yeah. Yeah. make it seem like it's not a great yeah. film. Of course, you know. well, and, and yeah, exactly. And if it like you said, if it only goes to like let's say ten theaters, and half half of them like it because that uh, because the other people don't like horror movies, then you know, no one's going to give it any life afterwards. But exactly. we've been so fortunate, we've been so fortunate that people you know really love the cast, they love the film, and um, you know we're already in a number of film festivals. And we're nominated for a number of awards from those film festivals. So um, I think we have a little gem here, and I'm excited for people to see it. There's, all, you know, there's people that see the trailer and send in videos uh, to me <laughs> and saying that the trailer, you know, scared the crap out of them. So, uh, you know, hopefully the movie will do the same. Well, well we're definitely looking forward to it, and we're going to continue to, you know, push for everything we can with for you and the film. Oh yeah, for sure. Well, you know, I, I must say, you guys have been, you've been there for me for the short film. And uh, one of the things that I always do is I try to do my research on things and, you know, on, on, on different sites and, and podcasts. And uh, you, you guys are a great support of the independent horror and the horror genre itself. And, you know, it's sometimes difficult to, uh, you can't lie to a, uh, to a horror, you know, fan base because, they uh, they're extremely smart, oh, yeah. and uh, I believe you guys have done such a great job that I'm extremely honored to be part of this uh, podcast, and uh, I look forward to the future with any films that I do to be a part of it as well. So I, I want to stay in touch, and you know, and let your fan. I mean, your I, I will let other filmmakers know that this is one of uh, oh, one of the podcasts that they should always you know look into. Oh man, we appreciate that. Uh, yeah, hell yeah. <laughs> We've been yeah slaving hard at this and uh, well, independent horror is where it's at. I mean, oh, yeah. come on. Yeah, there's. Like, Am I looking forward to it? Of course, I love that movie, but yeah, it's, it's yeah. going to be a big feature. I hope to God it don't bomb like the other big, you know, money yeah. put, thrown in it. I pray. I'm, I'm. I don't think it will, but you know. No, no. A, but, a lot, but a lot of these I, big feature films. Eh. Yeah. No. Yeah, you like, I, well, you know, I looked like, the other night. I just watched The Conjuring, and uh, and I, I, the, I think it was The Conjuring uh, Two, and uh, I, I was blown away by it. You know, 
and uh, uh, just the, the creepiness of it. Yeah. And so um, I hope that uh, that those films... Look, I, I want to support you know every film and, and all the filmmakers. It's really tough to make a... Um, to make a film and then and then on top of that when you go through the battle of making it and then there's people that attack you and yeah. it's tough going through that you have to have thick skin you know i mean people online have said oh this is a ripoff of that short film hush that was made you know years you know, a few years ago and i, I started laughing because now <laughs> you know they're thinking that i i ripped off my own my own film you know and and look there are other films that have that like that mo that same moment yeah. But if you go back, you know, to all these other films we've made over the course of time, you know, Missing in Action with Chuck Norris was the same as Rambo, you know, going in and going <laughs> to get these guys out. They're not ripping each other off. They're just telling the same story in a different way. Yeah. And I think that, that that's what it is. And with horror, there's, there's I always say this, there's th like 31 flavors. You have zombies, you have, you know, uh, monsters, oh, so you much. have uh, uh ghosts you have vampires there's everything to choose from you know oh. and um people people will, will will do the best that they can to make it so i try to support as many independent filmmakers as possible and and um and i hope that i can inspire them oh, with what sure. we've done from the short film you know from transition from short to feature oh yeah hey uh michael you ain't uh, you ain't trying to do no zombie movies are you uh no, no I, I, I don't plan on it. <laughs> okay, okay. I was just making sure because it's definitely saturated with zombie movies right now. Uh, without a doubt. No, oh. I have. I actually, I actually am. Uh, uh, Tommy Harper, who is the uh, producer of this as well, was um, was part of was part of the uh, the movie itself, and um, you know, part of the uh, the, the feature, and uh, he helped me develop the feature and then when we, we went in you know malik came in we uh went through made made the picture and, and uh kept it on track well tommy and i had a meeting uh before that about a script that i wrote called kevlovic and um that we're making in iceland and it's i i hate saying i hate saying this but to give you an idea so you know where it's headed it's it's it, it'll feel like the thing and alien in that sex. And uh, you'll see uh, when we uh, get that rolling. Oh, that's... But what's it like filming in Iceland, though? <laughs> like, what's I mean, that? Like filming in Iceland, what's that, what's that like? Well, I, I, I actually, they, they flew me there for uh, a uh, scouting, that's and a, it was amazing. It's a beautiful and place. Be, we'll be working. Yeah, it, it is amazing. It's amazing. The, the people are incredible, and uh, we're working with a, a, a producer by the That's name cool. of Kristen Thornton, who's uh, with uh, uh, True North, and they've worked with Tommy before on Star Wars and a number of other movies. I think they shot uh, uh, Fast oh. and Furious 8 up there as well. Oh, damn. So, yeah. Wow. That's, so we're, you know, that's awesome. <laughs> but but uh, once again, you know, making this, this little horror movie, that's getting so much attention yeah. is really, you know, getting, uh, giving me the opportunity to make those other bigger films. And, yeah. um, you always remember yeah. it because it's like a child to me. We're definitely proud of you for that. I'm sure you've worked your ass off for this and yeah. you deserve, you know, all the, uh, all the greatness coming from it. And like I said, we can't wait to see it. Well, well I'll make sure, I'll make sure you guys get a, a, a signed, uh, Blu-ray, of the movie, but um, I, I, and, a, and a poster or something. But yeah, you know, yeah. we're, we're going to be premiering. We're premiering in uh, in Miami at the uh, Popcorn Frights Film Festival. I uh, won't you get, uh, can you get Lionsgate to fly us? Uh, <laughs> no, I'm joking. <laughs> See it. <laughs> That'd be awesome. But yeah, we're, we're um, I think it's August seventeenth, which is a Thursday. We'll be playing there, and then I'll know more. And when we get uh, awesome. when we get something together, I'll make sure that uh, you guys uh, see it. So if anybody's in Miami for that, they should yeah. look up Pop Popcorn Frights on. Uh, I think you look it up on Facebook or, or online and uh, check it out. But oh, there's Frights. some great little films that are there that are playing. And um, in fact, I've got to connect you with some of those filmmakers. When I go there, I'll make sure that I connect you with some of those filmmakers that have uh, made some great little horror films. Yeah, that'd be awesome. So, uh, yeah. 
because yep. what we want to do is try to get people that that just never been heard of, you know, or just, maybe not just never been heard of, but just let people know who up other people are. Yeah, up and comers like, yeah. hey, look out for yeah. this person. Look out for this. Look out for Michael Kehoe. <laughs> you know, like, right. these are the films that are coming up. And that's awesome. Well, you know, you know, what we should do too is I should probably turn you on to, you know, who Amanda Wiss is, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. We, we, we we had her on the podcast. Yeah. Oh, you had her on the podcast? Yeah. I believe it was in January. Yeah. I mean, oh, okay. I'm pretty sure we talked yeah. about you. Actually. Yeah. yeah. She's great. Yeah, she's, she's very great. nice. And, then, and of course, you know, there's uh, Andrew Devoff, who uh, was in the film, who's a great actor. I mean, this guy, I got to tell you, one of the things that was great was he sunk his teeth into this role, which I was blown away. He had this incredible German accent. And... Sometimes, you know, he was so dedicated into it that he was submerged into the character that he would forget the lines and he really wanted the lines and he would get angry. And I would tell him, you know, this anger, you've got to use this in this character. Yeah. And let me tell you something. When you see this, he is so powerful in the role. And his daughter, there's another great story. I, there's an actress that plays Alice. And I didn't, you know, when, when I, when we cast her, in the movie, we didn't know this about her. I I play guitar, and I played guitar with her on uh, on a little uh, song. I had asked her. I said, you know, she wanted to record a song. A friend of mine uh, turned me you know, introduced us, and she said, "You play guitar, and I want to record something." She's only seventeen years old, and I said, "Sure." And we played. Um, I picked a song called uh, "That Boy" by the Beatles, and just did a guitar, and she recorded it. And afterwards, she had this very quirky kind of voice that was just melodic. It was just beautiful. And I said, I said, you know, you, you, you're an actress, right? And she said, yeah. I said, well, we should have you come in and read. Huh. Well, she came in and read, and she blew me away with this performance, just that she did it completely different than everyone else that came in. And then I wanted her to come in for a table read, but she said she couldn't. I said, why? She said, I can't tell you. And I asked her mother, and she said, "I can't tell you." Oh damn! And the reason why they couldn't—the reason why they couldn't tell me at the time, because she was one of the number one uh, contestants on The Voice. She was Miley Cyrus's choice on The Voice. Her name is Darby Ann Walker. Oh wow! So, so I had no idea that we hired Darby Ann Walker, who was on The Voice, and <laughs> you know, and she made it all the way, you know, to uh, I think the last ten or something like that, or last five. But she was a super hit. You can look up, look up some of the songs. In fact, look up some of the song, uh, Darby Walker, uh, That Boy, and you'll hear me on guitar and her singing. Her voice is incredible. In fact, she cut together a little trailer on that. So oh, that's, uh, that's freaking awesome. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You know, I, Small world. You know, like all, <laughs> all these great little moments, you know, that happen. I mean, even, you know, David Naughton's in the movie, who was the lead in... Uh, in an American Werewolf in London, and he's a friend, and he just said, I said, look, it's not I, it's one little role. He said, Mike, I'll, I'll come in and do it. Don't worry about it. And uh, and Amanda as well, you know. Yeah. And I, you know, I want to work with them in the future, and I want to, you know, continue these relationships. Well, hell yeah. Oh, for sure. Definitely. Yeah. Um, so. I don't know if, uh, I don't know, I don't know if you could talk about this or not, but. Uh, and help them. Okay, well. I'll just cut that part out then. Yeah. Okay. Well, um, Lionsgate needs to hurry out and get this out. Cause, uh, yeah. We want to see it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but, for you know, sure. want to see it. Exactly. Um, exactly. Well, you know, if you continue spreading the word out there, I'm sure they're going to appreciate it. And, uh, you know, and, and I will most of all, because as I said, I'm honored to be with you guys. And, and uh, you're like the voice of independent horror out there so you got to keep keep plugging away at it oh yes sir we we definitely will we definitely will uh we michael we appreciate you being on with us today and uh we're really looking forward to talking to you in the future about your future endeavors and just anything really <laughs> yeah we'll have to definitely have you on after uh we get to see the movie and discuss it with you absolutely and listen hopefully by that time, I'll be hanging around with you guys enough 
Maybe I'll be getting that uh, accent down and try to get that uh, together too. Think about that. Uh, yeah. Hell yeah. <laughs> Hell yeah. Come on. <laughs> that's, that's awesome. We appreciate it, man. Yeah, thank you, sir. Well, once again, I'm going to spread the word about you guys, and uh, I can't thank you enough. Uh, you know, on behalf of the casting crew of the Hatred, you guys, you guys are something else, and I, I, I can't wait for this to happen for you to get it out. Well, hell yeah. Well, we'll definitely be in touch, and uh, we hopefully can get a screener so we can get a get a review up for the movie, and we're gonna keep pushing away for it. To, for and if we don't get a screener, we'll still. Well, we'll yeah, we had that. But. We'll, we'll some, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll try to make something work. I wish you would come into Miami. Yeah, we'll I wish we were too. Work. I wish we could afford to. <laughs> 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 be honest. Well, well, we'll make it happen. But thank you again for everything. No, thank hey, you. thank you, Michael. And you, yeah. you have a good weekend. All right, fellas. Take care. Right, take we'll care. Bye. Bye. All right, guys. So that's Michael G. Kehoe. Follow him at Michael or Mikey Kehoe. M I K E Y K E H O E on Twitter. He's always putting stuff up, tweeting. Oh yeah. And uh we hope y'all enjoyed that interview. And just be on the lookout for the hatred coming out in September. V O on demand. V O D Blu ray. Yep. And then eventually Netflix if you don't want to buy V O on demand, but I imagine they'll let that play through on the Via on demand and Blu ray for a while. Oh, yeah. And uh, he's a super nice guy. And uh, of course, we got to hook up with him through uh, Ivana, correct? Ivana Cadaver. And we've been I mean, looking forward to this film for, gosh, since. Well, I guess going on two years. Beginning of, yeah, beginning of uh, 2016. Well, he said 15. Yeah, but we, st- oh, we okay. started talking to him beginning of 2016 around that, you know. Yeah. And uh, so. It just goes to show you how long it takes a, a film to be made yep. and to get it released. But uh, as always, uh, hit us up on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, Snapchat. Check out the podcast on Stitcher Radio, SoundCloud, Google Play, iTunes, Blueberry, uh, Blueberry, YouTube, uh, and hit up that Patreon. Support yep. if you like this stuff. Help support it. Uh... Get you a Tennessee Horn and show. Yeah, Teesprings, guys. That, that link will be in the description. Yes, yes, help us, please. Hell yeah. That's all we got. We out. Wait, that was your line. That's all we got. We out. Peace. So you got to correct me.